Okay, okie dokie. So the list of unique smartphones continues to grow today. I have one of the most unique ones I think that I've ever seen. I was like, I need to look at that. I need to handle it. It's a Chinese smartphone maker. One of the biggest there is, Meizu, and the phone is called the Pro 7 Plus. It features two displays, a display on the front and a display on the back. Personally, I haven't seen anything like that before. It's LTE, 64 gigabytes of storage and six gigabytes of RAM for Jack's purposes. That's right, Jack is back. These are the bands that are supported. Can they see that? They can. Very serious seal breaking here. There you go. Just open void. All right, so do they just know if it's, you, you know maybe if you buy one of these, if it's ever been opened. But then again, how would you know? Because it's not like you don't see that on there. That's a very confusing sticker. The two-tone. Woo! Bit of an experience. That slides out of there. You could put that on your desk and put pens in it. Get your pens in there, brother. So the phone comes out from the side like so. Ooh, ah, little SIM tool. Oh, they've given you a case with a cutout for where that extra display will be. Hello? Because you are a valued customer, my staff and I would personally like to thank you for visiting our store and for your business. That's why we hope you'll accept a beautiful two-piece stainless steel carving set as our gift to you just for attending our VIP event this Saturday, September 9th. We'll have a USB cable, type C on this end, old school USB on that end, the European power brick. This is something that has been the case for many Meizu phones. This home button also acts as your back button. You, you tap it to go back. Instead of having the three button system, you hold this as well for other functions. It is clickable and it's also your fingerprint sensor. So it's one button, it does everything. Front facing camera as well as the speaker. The whole thing actually feels nice and well made, well built. Aluminum around the outside here. Cold to the touch, that's what I'm looking for. I can't feel my fingers anymore. I lied, they're, they're, they're numb. This is where your display is gonna be. Right underneath the dual lens system, we have USB type C, a headphone jack, and a speaker. You have two slots. Now both of these slots are for SIM cards. Neither one is for expandable storage, unfortunately. Okay, so the unit is booted up now, as you can see. AMOLED display on here. It sort of slips in somewhere around the Galaxy S price. You can find it on Amazon, I think, for around 500, 550. I'll link it down in the description, just so you're aware. What? Ooh, that's my camera icon, that's an odd one. I have a fairly lightweight skin on it compared to some of what I've seen online, but of course, this is Android. You could configure it however you want. Once you pull down this tray here, you notice it's a little bit different with the quick settings and so on. So you tap it, it gives you haptic feedback when it's being used as a back button. What if I wanna go all the way back to the home page, like a home button? I just click it. You swipe up over there for the multitasking. See that there? You end up with a little bit less clutter down here because it's a single button scenario. I'm going to kill you. You wanna see this secondary display, this real differentiating factor. It's also AMOLED, look at that. Very bright, very vibrant. And when you flip the device over, it triggers this display to turn on because it assumes you're looking at this side now. You can program this secondary display on the back to also show incoming calls, notifications, and phone status, whether it's playing music, charging, and so on. Oh, there you go. Some new text messages. I don't think I can open them though. Jack has sent me a little, what is that Jack? And I just turned on double tap the wake it comes back on. All right, so having this little bit of information, I guess is kind of nice. You have the steps, the time, the weather, and so on. But like the real killer function here, the thing people are excited about is the ability to use your rear camera while still being able to frame up a shot. Because inevitably you see people out there, they want to use the better camera that's on the back of their phone. So they're out there kind of like this, but they don't nail it. So with this secondary display, you just pull down from the top and it launches the rear camera that kind of behaves like a back camera. Can you see that? Look, I'm gonna come in there, see my face in there. You guys can see yourself in there. And there's a few different modes as well. So there's a blur mode, which uses the two lenses to kind of attempt to blur 
the background. And then if I swipe one more time, there's a beauty mode to keep you looking pretty, as you know. I'm gonna use the original mode, and I can just kind of line myself up here, reach up, tap it, three, two, one, and boom, I have a super high quality selfie there. That's from the rear camera. The selfie enthusiasts out there are gonna be amped up at this particular development right here. Two lenses, three different shooting modes. Going further, Jack. Look at the beard hairs! Holy moly. Look at the detail on that. That's a selfie, man. It's a selfie, Jack. It's unbelievable. I don't know that you want that much detail. I don't know that I want that much detail, but you got the detail. Considering the fact that you're probably offended by that level of detail, I can go back here and toggle on that beauty mode. Beautiful Lou in three, two, Oh my. Ah, oh, yes. Have I been softened a touch? Is the skin just a little more attractive? You can go down here and hit this button and get even more beautiful after the fact. Like that's, did you see what just happened there? Oh no. The dual lens blur effect that I mentioned before. First of all, dual lens off, big will. Now we turn on the blur effect. I mean, it's like, it's a very severe type of blurring to the background there. I'm personally not a huge fan of this feature in the first place because I prefer the natural big aperture when available. If you wanna dabble a little bit with depth of field, you're playing with it now. Now, Wi-Fi is about as good, if not a little better, than a lot of devices tested here. So, almost 34 down and almost 50 up. Today, we're back to gadgets under $10. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. All right, the video looks good. For 10 bucks. So, for a basic type of installation, you can have all the ambience of a colorful light without the expenditure of a Wi-Fi connected one. Let's try it against an S8 real quick. We're back to gadgets under $10. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. I did a video Sounds on this. a lot nicer Very interesting. You can charge, you can lamp, you can do it all. It's a little bit more clear and full than the S8 speaker. So it's worth noting. So as you can see here, this device comes in a couple of different colors. I have the black version here, but you can see a kind of reddish one that's also available there. Now you should be aware there's two sizes of this device. This is the plus model with the 5.7 inch display. There's a smaller unit with a 5.2 inch display that, that isn't called plus. So if you're looking for something smaller with this rear screen, that's the one you're looking for. This unit has a 3,500 milliamp hour battery, 64 gigabytes of internal storage in the unit that I've got here, but you can spec this up to 128. There's another model you can buy. The cameras on the back are made by Sony and they're both 12 megapixel F 2.0 lenses. No Bluetooth 5.0, instead 4.2, uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so there you have it, a unique phone. That's what I aim to do here. This is something I haven't seen before, so I absolutely had to check it out. Of course, you are going with a brand that at least North American customers are a lot less familiar with. I think for most people at this particular price point, you're still gonna end up with an S8 or some other product from a more recognizable brand. But if you wanna be a little bit avant-garde, if you wanna be a, a trendsetter, Blaze a trail. One thing I can say, if you pull this out of your pocket, people will be surprised. You're probably gonna get a selfie together. Question time. How much will could will do do if will do could will do? That sounds like a question for will do. What's the answer, Will? Will do does a lot. Is it true that you originally created this channel to have an excuse for your wife to buy all these gadgets? No comment. It does help. Not gonna lie. Imagine, without this channel, wh wh what kind of gadget habit I might have. It could be destructive. Why don't you bring up random celebs at your place to unbox things with you and make vids about it? Who would you like to see on Unbox Therapy? Let me know in the comments or tag those people on Twitter. Harass them, tell them they need to get on to Unbox Therapy. Those celebrities, I, I want A list. All right, maybe B, C is fine. Hey Lou, do you think the move by Google to also ditch the headphone jack will be enough to push everyone into USB-C headphones? Some days I have days where I'm like, ah, I don't miss the headphone jack at all. It's no big deal, adapters, wireless, blah, blah, blah. And then other days, I'm like, I go to plug something and I'm just like, oh, it can be a nuisance, it can be a headache. You might not have the right adapter and you might not have Bluetooth headphones. It still does happen. For the space that it takes up, maybe just throw a headphone jack in there. 
just like they did on the S8. So Google will, yeah, probably do it, but I think there will still be some manufacturers that understand we want that versatility and they'll keep the headphone jack around a little bit longer. I, I think possibly even the next generation of Samsung devices might hold on to it. And I think it would be a good move if they did. Why not?